when I came home in 2010, uh, what Dad was running with the first cross used and the Merino used wasn't enough income for two families. 13, 14 were pretty bad droughts, sold a lot of stock. We had two age groups of weathers and went down to none. And then after four, 2014, we really had to start to focus on rebuilding and how we we're going to rebuild. Rick came home after doing a lifetime U course and said there's pretty big genetic gains in merinos, uh, big maternal merinos, they've got so many advantages, they're highly fertile and he probably prompted me for three years and I didn't take much notice, I guess that's how it is for old blokes. And then uh, he took me to the Best Wool Conference in um, Bendigo and I walked out of that conference and I said um, I reckon some of this can work Rick and he said I've been trying to tell you that for three years Dad. Purchasing expensive rams to a shock to dad. If I remember rightly, he spent about seven grand on rams for in about five or six years. I went and put $60,000 worth of rams through the account in one year. So it had to be a fair justification. And because we did that, we went to two joinings so we could use the rams twice. EID'd all the ewes uh, to get not individual size, but um, bloodline size and straight from marking, we're getting marking weights of lambs, weaning weights, and getting a growth rate that way. And we said we might as well measure the fleece as well, so we started fleece weighing as one and a half year old the lambs to make sure to see if the uh, ASPVs were working. Well, as, soon as, as soon as Rick started bringing these new genetics in, uh, as soon as the lambs hit the ground, they just grew. Even when we got them into the lamb marking cradle, and um, they were bigger and they were growing quicker right from conception, I reckon. Big gains, big improvers, just a genetic thump really, yeah, that's what it is. His knowledge of the physical features and the wool on the ram were perfect, so I did the numbers, he did the phenotypic stuff and it was just the combination of the two which narrowed down to the rams we were going to purchase. Like we, nev we never got weaning weights of 20 kilos at 12 weeks and we're hitting 25 kilos at 12 weeks and fleece weights of one and a half year olds up around four and a half kilos when it was three. Like that, that's the peak end of it, not the averages, but it was just quite impressive to see, see where, what the top end of it was doing really early on. As an old bloke, you don't really realise you're so far behind the modern ideas. I didn't think I was too bad a, a cocky, but you know, it was, that was a big, big learning curve for myself. And yeah, and, and Rick did a grazing management course, which um, I used to run a mob in each paddock sort of thing. And he started doing rotational grazing and mobbing up mobs. And yeah, and I see the benefit in growing pastures that way. And now he's into growing um, pastures and sowing annuals every year. And I can see the benefits of it, yeah. After that first year, he, he, we haven't hesitated for the next three years after that, we invested similar each year on rams to um, keep it going. While changing the breeding objective a little bit, focusing on, on the fat and muscle and growth, but putting staple length in there too for fleece weight and planar bodies, which was the transition. For the lamb survival, we've started to focus on number of lambs weaned. Now the seed stock producers are getting some good data on that. The change our jag focus has, has helped out with the weathers as well. It wasn't a, a direct goal out of the results of going sheep genetics, but we used to retain our weathers till they were two tooths um, and get a full shearing out of them because that was the only way you could make money. But now we're, they're hitting prime lamb market grids at six, seven months of age, so it just opens a whole new window of selling them into that grid and offloading them earlier for, for a good profit. Another one for the early growth, which is a tick, is being able to join new lambs successfully. Same as the weather's selling, but we're joining the new lambs, hitting those 40 kilos at uh, seven to eight months of age and lambing down lambs at 13, 12, 13 months of age as lambs, which is uh, basically we're getting that genetic gain a lot quicker due to young genetics having lambs. So what we've seen is what we hope to get out from the day dot. Um, the genetics just really covering it off on the 
growth rates, um, they've helped with the fleece weights, they've helped with the lamb survival and the biggest one for us with our dry spells is the genetic fat just holding those ewes in the right condition in the tough times and if I'm not feeding them then I'm saving money so it's, that's the biggest, biggest tick we've found and yeah we're just stoked with the results we've been getting. My advice is uh, you've got to use these modern things, ASBVs, you know, if, if you really want to make money out of sheep, just use them. Yeah. They're out there, the tools are out there, use them. I wouldn't be where I was today if it wasn't for Dad's advice. I'd have some pretty, pretty ugly sheep coming through. You may have spent the last 10 years, 15 years, picking awesome physical sheep, but how do you know what they produce? It's um, sheep genetics, um, ASPVs, they're not the silver bullet, but they are a massive percentage of, of, of the tick list of, of helping out. Like, it's just another tool in the toolbox to, to help with that sheep genetics. So you take your experience of your 10 years of picking the best ram and then narrow those 10 best down to three best by using the genetics because you'll get a lot better result out of it.